BestBookBits.com presents Sleep Smarter, 21 proven tips to sleep your way to a better body, better health, and bigger success by Sean Stevenson. When it comes to health, there is one criminally overlooked element, sleep. Good sleep helps you shed fat, stay productive, and improve virtually every function of your mind and body. That's what Sean Stevenson learned when a degenerative bone disease crushed his dream of becoming a professional athlete. Like many of us, he gave up on his health and his body until he decided there must be a better way. Through better sleep and optimized nutrition, Stevenson not only healed his body, but also achieved fitness and business goals he never thought possible. Stevenson shares easy tips and tricks to discover the best sleep and best health of your life. With his 14-day sleep makeover, you'll learn how to create the ideal sleep sanctuary, how to hack sunlight to regulate your circadian rhythms, which clinically prove sleep's nutrients and supplements you need, and stress reduction exercises and fitness tips to keep you mentally and physically sharp. The written summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of Sleep Smarter. Sleep is valuable. Stevenson's first tip is that you need to truly understand the value of sleep. It's not just about closing your eyes. Sleep has a direct impact on your mental, emotional, and physical performance. Stevenson explains that a simple lack of sleep can lead to so many health issues such as depression, obesity, and immune deficiencies. It's not something we think about a lot, but getting enough sleep also has a direct impact on your productivity. Many of us lead busy lives and assume that getting a few hours less of sleep means a few hours more of work. However, Stevenson points out that the prioritizing work over sleep is actually counterproductive. Instead of allowing you to get more work done, you find yourself burnt out, stressed, slower, and your creativity will suffer. Evidence suggests that you actually make 20% more mistakes when you are sleep deprived, only creating more work for you. Stevenson gets a bit scientific and explains that sleep directly correlates to the amount of glucose in your brain. If you're not getting enough sleep, your glucose is reduced. Alas, the craving for sugar when 3.30 p.m. hits, your body is actually telling you you're sleep deprived and require more glucose. When you have a big project due or a deadline looming, schedule enough time to make sure you complete the job at hand. Don't sacrifice sleep in order to meet deadlines. Sunshine. Stevenson encourages us to get outside and experience more sunshine hours every single day. The science behind this explains that light sends direct signals to your organs and a critical hormone gland in your body and encourages you to wake up. It's important that you use natural light. Sunlight sends a trigger to your body, which assists in the regulation of your body clock and allows your body's protection of hormones to be at the optimal level. Everyone's heard of melatonin before. The magical substance that aids sleep. Well, it's actually created naturally in the body and encourages sleep. Melatonin is influenced dramatically by your physical exposure to light. If you can work to get more sunlight in the day and dull your exposure in the evening, you'll be working towards creating an optimal body clock and even better sleep. Maximize sunlight exposure, particularly between the hours of 6 and 8.30 a.m. If you work in an office, get out during the day and go for a walk to get some natural sunlight. No screens at bedtime. We live in a highly technological world and it's hard to escape the screens. Whether it be your laptop at work, your phone while you're on the go, or your TV set at home, we are constantly looking at screens. And ask yourself this, is the last thing you do before bed every night stare at some form of screen? Stevenson explains that the light these devices send out are actually pretty damaging to our sleep cycles. Devices emit a blue light which will affect the melatonin we discussed previously. This will keep you awake and you'll find it harder to fall asleep at night. Limit device use 90 minutes before sleep. Read a book instead. Caffeine curfews. For many of us, caffeine is our go-to first thing in the morning and we continue to rely on it throughout the day as we navigate our busy lives. However, Stevenson stresses the importance of understanding that caffeine is a powerful stimulant. It's best used first thing in the morning and can be beneficial in promoting productivity. But... When consumed within 6-8 to eight hours of your bedtime, caffeine can be detrimental to your sleep quality. Stevenson explains that you need to set a curfew. For example, if you go to bed at 10pm every evening, your last coffee should be no later than 2pm. 
It's important to note that coffee isn't the only source of caffeine. It can be found in tea, chocolate, and most energy drinks. Sometimes even cold and flu medication will contain caffeine. Set a caffeine curfew at 2 p.m. Caffeine has a half liter of 8 hours, IG, 200 milligrams of caffeine becomes 100 milligrams in 8 hours and 50 milligrams 8 hours after that. It hangs around in your system for a long time, so be careful when consuming caffeine. Optimum temperature, cool. I bet you're all familiar with that feeling of being too hot to sleep, tossing and turning, trying to find a cool patch in the bed. Temperature is actually really important when it comes to getting a good sleep. Stevenson explains that the thermoregulation has a big influence on your sleep cycle. Intrinsically, your body should know to drop your body temperature to optimize sleeping temperature when it's bedtime. But if the conditions are too hot, it can become extremely challenging for your body to regulate. That is why it's so important to have a cool environment in your bedroom. But ensure that it's not too cold also. Take a warm bath, shower an hour or two before bed. The increased core body temperature from the heat will fall accordingly and level out a little cooler right before bed. Bedtime. Getting to bed at an appropriate time can be really difficult. It's easy to stay up late watching Netflix and all of a sudden it's after midnight and you realize you need to be up at 6am. Stevenson explains how getting to sleep at the right time will improve the quality of your sleep dramatically. He explains that the time between 10pm and 2am is considered a magic window of sleep. Scientifically explained, this is because your hormones secretion and recover is doing its best work during this time. Stevenson explains that it doesn't come down to how many hours you get a night. You might still only get six hours, but if four of those hours were between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., you're already doing better than someone who got six hours from 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. Stevenson explains that your body gets a second wind after about 10 p.m. if you're not already asleep. This is a release of melatonin that will, as a result, make getting to sleep harder. So try your best to be asleep before 10 p.m. whenever you can. Sleep cycles are your body's natural rise and fall of sleep depth, which takes about 90 minutes. By waking up at the top of a cycle, you wake up feeling refreshed and alert. Wake up at the bottom about 45 minutes in, and you'll wake up feeling pretty groggy. Magical Magnesium Stevens raves about magnesium. It's a natural occurring mineral that has numerous benefits to the body, including blood sugar regulation, circulation improvement, pain reduction, muscle relaxation, and in general, an overall stress reducer. As an all-rounder, when it enters the body, magnesium has so many areas to work on that it's quickly used up. Stevenson explains that approximately 80% of us are deficient in magnesium. Either magnesium bath salts or body oils will get some extra magnesium into your body reducing your stress and encouraging a better night's sleep. Stevenson suggests either of those sources of magnesium over pills as the benefits can be lost during digestion. Keep the magnesium infusion beside your bed and apply it to areas that are sore, stressed, on the chest, neck and shoulders. Sleep Sanctuary Many of us are probably guilty of using our bedroom as a multi-purpose room for entertaining friends, for getting work done, or as a makeshift dining room for eating takeout while watching a movie. However, this can be a big negative impact on our sleep. The bedroom should be only used for two things. One, sleep. Two, the other thing. Stevenson explains that during work in bed, it's possibly the worst thing you could do to your sleep quality. Even this simple task of replying to emails is a big no-no. The last thing you want to do is associate your bed with any kind of stress. Another consideration to take is the air in your bedroom. Stevenson recommends ensuring that there is a source of fresh air every day. He explains that without the intake of fresh air, the room's air quality was stale and the ions in the air literally lose their negative charge. We want as many negative ions as we can as they are energizing. They eliminate odors, mold and other nasties in your house. Another great idea from Stevenson is to have a houseplant in your room. Get at least one houseplant, keep work out of the bedroom. Oh, as we mentioned above, the bedroom should be used for only two things, sleep and sex. Stevenson explains that the effect of the orgasm on your sleep, the intense conception of chemicals released in your body through orgasm, is a perfect sleep inducer. This should be pretty self-explanatory. Just remember, you don't necessarily need a partner to get the benefits. Blackout. 
There's a reason we go to sleep at night, and that's because we are naturally wired to sleep in the dark. Stevenson explains that any source of light will have an effect of the quality of your sleep. And it's not something you can fix with a simple sleeping eye mask. Light actually has the ability to penetrate your skin. So if there's light entering the bedroom, you need to fix this. Blackout curtains are a great way of getting rid of light pollution. Remove light-up devices and get a dim alarm clock. Train. Sleep is a process not only all rest, but also of recovery. Stephen explains that working out is the act of tearing your muscles and damaging tissues. Sleep is designed to repair the tears and aid your body in recovery. Someone who works out will create more of the hormones required to keep repairing and recovering. However, Stephen also recommends morning workouts. If you work out just before bed, your body doesn't have enough time to reduce the core temperature, and as we've discussed earlier, you need to be in cool in order to have a good quality sleep. It also matters how you work out. Simple cardio is good, but lifting weights will get the best results for your body. You'll sleep better and feel better. Lift weights at least two days a week. Focus on shorter supersets. Tech stays out of the bedroom. This one should be self-explanatory, especially after we've already discussed the damaging blue light of screens and the dangers of bringing work into bed. There's scientific evidence to suggest that people who have those devices in the bedroom and use them before bed take a longer period of time to reach deep sleep that we require. They also don't manage to spend as long in this state. Stevenson also explains that these devices are known to emit harmful electric and magnetic fields. With links to health concerns, it's best to keep them out of the bedroom altogether. Use a good old-fashioned alarm clock to wake up, talk to your partner before bed, or have a big O. This should keep you more than entertained. Be healthy. Another contributing factor to the quality of your sleep is, interestingly, your weight. If you're sitting at a heavier weight than perhaps you should be, you may find your sleep is lower quality. The stress to your organs, endorphins, and nervous system from being overweight is linked to decreasing your quality of sleep. Stevenson explains that cortisol, the anti-sleep hormone, is more common in people who are overweight. It's important to focus on the quality nutrition, getting a good balance of fats, protein, and carbohydrates at each meal. Too many carbs will affect your insulin level, focus the quality of fats and proteins for optimum health. Focus on whole foods and avoid processed foods. Avoid food, especially carbs, just before bed. Start your day with a good meal, not carbs, as this will cause an insulin spike. Booze. A lot of people associate drinking alcohol with drifting off to sleep quickly. However, the speed at which you fall asleep does not correlate to the quality of your sleep. The speed at which you fall asleep does not correlate to the quality of your sleep. Stevenson explains that your brain and body don't completely turn off when you've been drinking and won't reach the optimal deep sleep state. If drinking, wrap it up some time to spare before sleep, ideally four hours. Also make sure you drink plenty of water before you hit the sack. Sleeping position matters. It's pretty important to be as comfortable as possible when sleeping. And Stevenson explains that the way you sleep actually has an impact on the quality of your sleep. Blood flow to your brain. Oxygen and your breathing are obvious critical processes for the body, and certain positions improve these functions. Back sleeping. It's good for your spine and digestion, although it can be related to sleep apnea and snoring. Front sleeping. Prevent snoring. Be careful that you don't hurt your neck, so get rid of the pillow and lift a knee to open up your hips. Side sleeping. One of the most common positions and the most natural. Good for digestion and eliminating heartburn. Choose the position that best works for you and try to stick with it. Calm before bed. How familiar is the feeling of jumping into bed and suddenly your brain shifts into overdrive? Planning, thinking, questioning. This can be extremely disruptive to your sleep and will keep you awake longer. Stevenson recommends meditation as a solution not only for sleep, but for all areas of your life. Stevenson explains that meditation is a process that will release good hormones and endorphins while reducing stress. It doesn't have to take long. All you need is 10 minutes a day. Meditating in the morning is often the most beneficial time to do so. It's when your brain is already near the alpha state. Start with guided meditation to begin with. Supplements. Stephen stresses the point that supplements should be your first port of call. But once you've addressed some of the other tips we've discussed, you can turn to some natural supplements to aid sleep. 
chamomile. It's a calming herb that relaxes your muscles and nervous system. Try it in tea form at night before bed. Kava Kava. Actually, a drink deriving from Fiji, it has a natural sedative, reducing the time it takes to drift off to sleep. Valerian. Another herb that is actually slightly stronger than a sedative. In tea form, it can help with uninterrupted sleep. Don't rely on melatonin supplements as there is evidence to suggest it decreases your natural ability to produce the hormone. Address all the other tactics in the book before using supplements to help you sleep. Early bird catches the worm. Earlier in this summary, we discussed the importance of sunlight on your sleep cycle. Waking up early is the perfect way to set you up for the day with a dose of natural sunlight. It aids your natural circadian rhythm and helps your body stay in sync. Stevenson highly endorses waking up early in the morning, having a purpose and getting some things done. It's a great way to get your day started with a dose of motivation and you'll find you'll get more done. Go to bed within 30 minutes of the same time every night. Many people think they can sleep less during the week and catch up at the weekend. All this does is throw your schedule out of whack. Bedwear. What do you go to sleep in? Stephen suggests wearing PJs as a way to trigger your body into the relaxed mood. It's important that PJs are incredibly comfortable and loose fitting. If you're a woman, try sleeping without a bra. It's better for blood flow. Men, try wearing boxes, loose fitting tops, basic t-shirts, or go naked. Women, try boy shorts, your significant other's t-shirt, flowing lingerie, yoga pants, or going naked. Grounding. Stevenson stresses the importance of getting grounded in our everyday life. He explains that we lead busy lives, leaving the house to drive our cars to work, always wearing shoes as a barrier between our bodies and the earth, and this can actually impact our sleep and health. Scientifically, there is an electromagnetic surface on the earth, and our bodies act as a conductor. We need to remain connected to the earth in order for our bodies to repair cells, reduce inflammation, and neutralize free radicals. Evidence suggests that the free electrons available on the Earth's surface can only be absorbed by direct contact with the Earth. Make an effort to ground yourself regularly. Simply touch the ground or a tree. Going to a beach is a fantastic way of doing this. It's And it's often why we sleep so well on holidays. Grounding yourself after a long flight can also help overcome the effects of jet lag and the stress long-distance travel puts on the body. Nighttime Rituals Stevenson explains that rituals and implementing a routine is essential in continuing to get a good quality sleep. By making a habit out of your evening routine, you have to put less thought into it and it will become an unconscious process. Make sure you get in the mood before bed and take time to unwind and relax. Read some fiction, take a bath, write in a journal, thinking about things you're grateful for, or meditate. Conclusion Key takeaways Number 1. Get sunshine during the day. 2. Don't look at screens before bed. 3. No caffeine 6 to 8 hours before bed. Number 4. You need to be cool in order to get a good sleep. 5. Sleep between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. 6. Use magnesium to aid stress reduction. 7. Only use the bedroom for sleep and sex. 8. Have an orgasm before bed. 9. We require complete darkness to sleep well. 10. Keep technology out of the bedroom altogether. 11. Be a healthy weight. 12. Exercise, specifically lift weights, but not before bed. 13. Don't drink too much alcohol. It's a stimulant. 14. Consider the best sleep position for you. 15. Consider practicing meditation. 16. Using herbal supplement such as chamomile. 17. Get up early. Don't sleep in. 18. Use pajamas as a mental trigger for bedtime. 19. Ground yourself often. And 20. Create a ritual in the evening that you will look forward to. And that's a wrap on Sleep Smarter. Subscribe to our channel and take a look at the hundreds of book summaries uploaded previously. To find hundreds of written summaries, check out our website, bestbookbits.com. And for hundreds of audio podcast summaries, find us on mixcloud.com forward slash bestbookbits. If you want to connect with myself and need some free guidance, advice, coaching, etc., drop me an email at coaching at best book bits. Thanks for watching and listening and have yourself an amazing day. Go ahead and sleep smarter.